north of uh, Custer, South Dakota in the Black Hills, 19th of September 2010. We've just uh, entered the uh, Crazy Horse Monument structure to see what's uh, happening before going on to Mount Rushmore. Can't seem to get my zoom to work. There it goes. You can see where the uh, chalk outline is of the uh, horse's head uh, work in process. And if you can't hear for some reason, just kind of wave at me and jump up and down a little and I'll get the point. Mm -hmm. So, who has an answer for me? Why do we call them the Black Hills? Because of the Black Rock. Because of the Black Rock that we've seen in there. There's another reason. Black clouds? <laughs> is it the trees? It is indeed. If you turn around and look behind you for just a second, the primary tree here in the Black Hills is the ponderosa pine. It has a very dark bark and a very dark needle. And then if you turn back and look out across the hills here, depending upon the light, they do in fact look black particularly when you look at them from the plains farther out. Now the Native Americans call that, call the Black Hills Paha Sapa, which translates to Hills of Black. They have been here for over a thousand years, lived here fairly peacefully until about the 1850s. All of a sudden we had lots of people going through, going to Oregon, going to California. We had some battles in here, we had some massacres, and in 1868, we had the Fort Laramie Treaty between the United States and the Lakota Sioux, the primary Native Americans here. Basically, that treaty said that the Black Hills belonged to the Sioux forever, and the U.S. government would keep the whites out of here. Well, it didn't take long for the U.S. to break that treaty. And if you know anything about Native American treaties, that was pretty common. 1874, along comes George Armstrong Custer. He brings a huge expedition in here, looking for a lot of things, among them gold. They find gold, they find lots of it, and within two years, there are 10,000 people in here looking for gold. U.S. Congress doesn't know what to do about that. They can't evict 10,000 people, but the treaty said they would keep them out. So because they didn't know what to do, they decided to just throw up their hands and do nothing. Now it took a long time, but in 1980, the Lakota got it before the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Blackman in his decision said he thought it was the most outrageous thing he had ever seen the U.S. government do, said it was too late to get the land back, but he awarded them $120 million. Well, he didn't want the money. They wanted the land because this land has always been considered sacred it still is. So that money has set in trust since 1980. It is now almost a billion dollars. Younger generations looking at that saying, we've got 80% unemployment, we've got all kinds of social issues, that money could go a long ways towards helping things on the reservation. Older generation sits on the Treaty Council, says no. We have a, a treaty with the United States government that says the Black Hills are ours. We want the land. So as we start our discussion about Mount Rushmore, know that there is controversy here.